To begin with, let me uh, make sure that I satisfy the CME compliance police. I have to go through the objectives, literally, and then we can talk a little bit about the larger context of why we put together this conference now in Doha. So the objectives of this forum of innovations in medical and health education are to identify major trends in global medical and health education, to illuminate the importance of innovations in addressing major contemporary challenges in this space, to discuss, debate, and finely tune such innovations for implementation across multiple systems worldwide, to promote regional and international collaborations, and to develop pathways leading to high quality global work health workforce. Today's program, there are four major sections. In the first section, we'll hear from the leaders presenting to us the state, the global state of medical and health education, starting with Dr. Victor Zhao, who is the president of Institute of Medicine, who will be talking about capacity building for a global workforce. We'll then hear from Dr. John Nocini, who is the president and CEO of FAMER, which is the Foundation for International Medical Education and Research. And we're talking about accreditation of international medical schools. We'll hear from Dr. Yang Ke, who is the executive vice president from Peking University. She'll be talking about transformation of medical education in China. In the second section, we'll have disruptive innovations, and we'll hear from Eric Hombo of ACGME and Don Melnick from NBME. We will then hear about Do Doctors Know Best, which is about the interprofessional education and a strong debate. And we'll have Rima Afifi from American University of Beirut, Kim Critchley, our dean here from University of Calgary of Nursing, and Dr. Kelly Skepp from Stanford University. We'll have lunch during which we have multiple poster presentations, some of which will be awarded near the end of the day. In the third session, we'll hear about local innovations from several Weill Cornell faculty members, innovations which we think can be exported elsewhere in the world. And you'll hear from Dr. Mohammed Waji. Dr. Stella Major, Dora Stadler, and Dr. Amal Khidir, who are all Weill Cornell faculty members, respectively, in family medicine, internal medicine, and clinical medicine, and pediatrics. Dr. Amal Khidir is faculty member in pediatrics. And finally, we will have a reasonably warm discussion and debate about the end game from Dr. Humayun Chaudhry, who is uh, the head of uh, state federal licensing body, from Dr. Robert Kemi who is the vice dean at Duke Singapore, Dr. Louis Nora, who is the president of ABMS, American Board of Medical Specialty, and Dr. Andrea Podmos, who is uh, the CEO of Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons in Canada. And then we'll have award announcement and closing remarks. So let me step back a little bit and uh, share with you why we are having this conference here and why in Doha. Those of you who have been to Doha in the last few years know this, but many of you have not been. And let me set the larger context. Qatar, in the last 15 years, has taken on a very ambitious agenda in higher education and science to really create a renaissance of knowledge in this entire region. Qatar has an ambitious national vision called Qatar National Vision 2030, which has four major pillars, human and social development, economic and environmental development. The first pillar of human development is where we are involved because that requires a lot of investment in education and healthcare. 
Qatar has invited several truly world-class institutions here, and now we have, after more than a decade, a critical mass of scientists, policymakers, and leaders coming together to work toward Qatar's ambition of becoming to be transformed into a knowledge-based society by 2030. The vision in the area of higher education, science, and community development through Qatar Foundation is provided by Her Highness Sheikh Hamouza bin Nasser, who is the chairperson of Qatar Foundation. Qatar Foundation is leading this effort in development of Qatar's leadership toward trans transformation into knowledge-based society. Education City is the flagship initiative of Qatar Foundation, about 14 kilometers square. Those of you who are here tomorrow and day after, please take some time. We'll organize for you to come to Education City. Take a tour and see. It will really blow your mind off. There are multiple, multiple institutions from all over the world which have been invited here to set up branch campuses over the last 10 years or so primarily initially from the U.S. and then increasingly from other parts of the world. I'll just name a few, while Cornell Medical College, of course, focusing on medicine, Virginia Commonwealth in design, Texas A&M Engineering, Georgetown University of Political Science, Northwestern Communications and Journalism, Carnegie Mellon University, Information Technology and Business, University of Calgary Nursing, Qatar Faculty of Islamic Studies, is indigenous campus here, HEC Paris Executive MDA, and University College London Architecture. This is a unique model, the like of which was never there before. We are bringing in world-class universities which will focus on their areas of strength. And it's working out beautifully. In addition, there are now three major research institutes, Biomedical, Qatar Biomedical Research Institute, Qatar Computing Research Institute and Environmental and Energy Research Institute, all working in concert to bring together this major transformation. The second stream of effort in terms of creating human development in addition to higher education is of course health and wellness. And that is led by His Excellency Abdullah bin Khalid al Qahtani, who's here with us today. A national health strategy was unveiled in 2011, which will be renewed and continued till the major objectives are met, which are to really create a comprehensive world class healthcare system and an integrated system of primary, secondary, tertiary healthcare, preventive healthcare, population health and wellness, a skilled national workforce. So it's absolutely essential. His Excellency has always said this to me, that our medical and health education needs to align with the needs of healthcare workforce in the country. A national health policy that sets and monitors standards and effective and affordable services for everyone. High caliber research directed at health outcomes. Now who would not want to join? Which country would not want to join those efforts? So Qatar is truly very fortunate to have the leadership which has invested resources in achieving this. A few words about Wal Cornell Medical College in Qatar. We were established in 2001 based on a contract with Qatar Foundation, the first medical school outside the U.S. giving U.S. degrees. We work very closely with our clinical affiliates, Hamad Medical Center and Sidra Medical and Research Center, and we are part of now a Qatar academic health system, which was established in 2011. Our faculty have appointments in the U.S., and all of them who are involved in teaching and research are Cornell faculty members, 69 full-time faculty here, 288 students in six years. And we have close to 300 clinical faculty now at Hamad and Sidra. We have already graduated 181 doctors in the last six years. One thing I take great pride in that although we came in here to bring a traditional American model, which was to really give an American degree, MD, for the first time outside the US, but we recognize after the first few years that transplanting 
the U.S. model, models from the West, just like that, do not work. We had to adapt to the local conditions, and so we have. So now we go deep in high schools, 10th grade, identify talented and interested students, we bring them in for evenings, weekends, summer enrichment, winter enrichment courses. We have set up a foundation program for one year, math, sciences, to prepare to optimize the transition of these high school graduates to our six-year medical education program, which is two years pre-med, four years med, and after which we have the MD degree. But not only that, we have worked very closely with our colleagues at Hamad Medical Center, which is our primary affiliate for clinical training, to bring in the ACGMEI accredited postgraduate residency training programs, and then beyond that, working very closely with the leadership of American Board of Medical Specialties, we are bringing now boards, American boards under ABMS eyes. Many of the boards will be starting here soon, starting with two or three initially, and then inshallah all the way up to 15 to 17 boards, which will create high standards for the workforce. We also intend to continue with the continuing medical education and maintenance of certification over the next few years. Now, getting back to innovations, why this conference of innovations? Qatar is, to me, truly has become the pivot, the beacon, the hub for innovations. Under Her Highness's leadership in 2009, a world summit on innovations in education was initiated called WISE. And it gives out, it's a three-day summit, it gives out prizes to six most innovative educational programs all over the world and has also created a WISE prize, a WISE laureate prize, parallel to the Nobel Prize in Sciences. As you know, there's no Nobel Prize in education. So this is the highest prize in education, internationally, anywhere. Late 2013, again, under the auspices of Her Highness's leadership, a World Innovation Summit for Health, WISH, was created. The purpose is the same, to bring government officials, policy leaders, academics, frontline practitioners all together to look at innovations for major issues in healthcare. So in November 2013, first time, the issues addressed were obesity, mental health, accountable care, end of life, care, road traffic accidents, patient engagement, antimicrobial resistance, and big data in healthcare. The theme for next month's second conference in February 2015 are how to compose complex health messages which can bring attention to grand challenges, delivering affordable health care, dementia, diabetes, patient safety, mental health and well-being in children, and universal health coverage. You get the idea. The focus is on innovations in both in education and healthcare. Qatar has a major focus on wellness and a particular program, Your Health First, which was launched under the leadership of His Excellency in 2012. It has been chosen of, from the 80 entries from 26 countries for the upcoming WISH. And initial findings will be presented. The focus in, is on school children, better nutrition, exercise, and overall health and well-being. There will be a lot of measures which will be presented over there. Very quickly, this is a rather complicated slide, but many, many countries would love to have a research infrastructure like this, where you could do all the way from discovery and basic research to population health research. Qatar can do it. There are institutions, there are infrastructure. There is a national research policy at this time. There is a national research vision. And over the next few years, you will hear a lot about findings from this infrastructure and from this country. Getting back to more relevant, the ideas of more relevance to today's conference in medical and health education, Qatar has become, over the last five years, a true hub for quality and innovation in medical education. After establishing Wild Cornell Medical College and University of Calgary in nursing, 
We have now, as I said earlier, with the help of our colleagues at Hamad, ECGME for postgraduate medical education, American Board of Medical Specialties, soon to follow, inshallah, within the next couple of months. We have also become a hub for global medical education in terms of exchange of senior medical students, which is called GEMEX, that is an initiative of Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates. And we are also aligning now with global health learning opportunities of the AAMC, the American Association of Medical Colleges. We do have the academic health system, the Qatar academic health system that I mentioned, which we launched in 2011. And of course, now we have the innovations in global medical and health education. This is the first conference and inshallah, it will be an annual one. Very closely aligned with this conference is a journal that we launched late 2013. Again, the same objectives, which are to provide a forum for the exchange of information that identifies the achievements and challenges of global medical and health education and to illuminate innovations that address such challenges and to engage opinion leaders globally. Many of them are here today to share their opinions and debate and discuss and identify innovations and to organize annual forums like this and then publish those findings. The journal has editor-in-chief Dr. Victor Zhao and myself, and then we have truly a stellar editorial board, which is who's who in international medical education. We will be inviting at least 10 to 15 other members from other continents from South America, Europe, and parts of Asia over the next few years. You will be hearing from many of these distinguished colleagues over the next few hours. Special thanks to the organizing committee, which worked for several months to make this conference a reality, and hopefully a very successful reality. I'll just read the names of the organizing committee quickly. Turaya Resi, Abdul Latif Al Khal, uh, no doctors, no MDs here, just the names, right? So everyone worked together. Turaya Resi, Abdul Latif Al Khal, Marian Baker, Robert Krohn, Gerardo Guiter, Imal Khidir, Mai Mahmoud, Stella Major, Maslina Mian, Ravinder Mabtani, Amanda Pullen, Amin Rakab, Stephen Scott, Dora Stadler, Basim Mutman, Nikola Adair, Nusreen Al Rifai, Dimal Sheikhli, Nada Hassan, Daniel Prinsler, Julie Sampson, and Renata Hayward. Let's all give them a hand. They've really done a good job. <laughs>